Adolf Hitler was an intemperate megalomaniac, considered one of the most powerful and dogmatic dictators in all of human history. His rise to power led to one of the biggest tragedies the world has ever seen, the horrific torture and murder of millions of people. And his memory lives on in our history, one of the darkest chapters within its pages. So it's not surprising that the world sighed with relief when word spread that he had died on April 30th, 1945. It was reported that the man whose name was a byword for evil had killed himself along with his newly married wife and longtime lover, Ava Brown. Both were then cremated and buried according to Hitler's written and verbal instructions. Despite the reports, there were some who refused to believe that Hitler was dead and at his own hands, no less. Even decades after his ignoble demise, there are still debates over whether the remains found in the bunker were truly his and his wife's. Join us as we look back in history, during the days before and after his death, to discover the clues that prove what most likely happened to Hitler on that fateful day. Most, if not all of us, are quite familiar with Adolf Hitler, so we won't get into detail regarding who he is and what he has done. Let's start the story in the early months of 1945. By this time, it was clear that the Allied forces had turned the tide and were winning the war. Poland was now in the hands of the Soviet Red Army, who was continuously advancing towards Berlin. The British and Canadian forces were already heading towards Ruhr. The US forces, on the other hand, were progressing towards Mainz, Mannheim, and the Rhine after successfully capturing Lorraine. Simply put, Nazi Germany was on the brink of total military collapse. Hitler had retreated to an underground bunker, the Führer bunker, though he was still giving out orders to his generals, trying to prevent the Allied forces from completely invading Berlin. By April 1945, Hitler's plan for a thousand-year Reich was no longer feasible. On his birthday, April 20th, the city was bombarded by Soviet artillery. By the next evening, the tanks of the Soviet Red Army were already at the outskirts of Berlin. During a conference on April 22nd, Hitler had a nervous collapse because his orders for a counterattack were not obeyed. It was during this time that he officially declared the war was lost. He also announced that he would remain in the city until the end, and then he would kill himself. After consulting with SS physician Werner Haas, Hitler learned that the most reliable method was the pistol and poison method. It meant taking a dose of cyanide before shooting himself in the head. By April 28th, Hitler received a report stating that Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler had tried to surrender to the Allies, claiming he had authority to do so. His offer was declined. Because of this, Hitler made his decision. At midnight on April 29th, he married his longtime mistress, Ava Braun, in a civil ceremony inside the bunker. After the wedding breakfast, Hitler talked to his secretary, Traudel Junger, about his last will and testament, which included instructions that they needed to carry out immediately after his death. By afternoon, Hitler learned that Benito Mussolini had been executed and then strung up by his feet. Afterwards, their corpses were thrown into the gutter. Hearing about these incidents further cemented Hitler's resolve to kill himself, preventing his enemies from making a spectacle of him. By April 30th, around 1 a.m., Hitler learned that all the forces he was counting on for a rescue were either encircled by the enemy or forced back. There was no longer any hope in sight. By 2.30, he started saying farewell to the people in the bunker, approximately 20 of them, before retiring to his personal quarters. Later in the morning, Hitler was informed that the fighting would probably end within 24 hours, since the garrison would most likely run out of ammunition within that time period. It became pretty clear that the end, his end as the Führer, was here. He would no longer be able to walk freely around the city of Berlin, the heart of his beloved nation. 
Instead, he had to hide while his enemies invaded the city. And now, he had to die. He walked into his study. Ava followed him in. The Führer's adjutant, Otto Gunscher, closed the door behind them, telling Rochus Misch, one of Hitler's bodyguards, that the Führer cannot be disturbed. Hitler had already told Gunscher that all the soldiers were released from their oath of loyalty. After some time, Hitler's valet Heinz Linger and secretary Martin Bormann entered the study. They saw the couple sitting upright on the sofa. Hitler had blood dripping out of his right temple. He had shot himself with his own gun, which now lay at his feet. Ava, on the other hand, had no visible wounds, but the smell of burnt almonds was in the air. She had died of cyanide poisoning. Gunscher announced that Hitler was dead to the people in the bunker. The generals viewed the bodies to confirm that the Führer was really gone. Afterwards, the men rolled up Hitler's body in a rug, carried the corpses out of the bunker to the garden behind the Reich Chancellery. In accordance with Hitler's instructions, the bodies were then burned with petrol. Though Hitler's body was rolled up in a rug, many witnesses testified that it was truly him because the top of his head was not covered. Hitler's death was then reported to the escort conman, Chief Franz Schädler. The group who witnessed the burning included Bormann, Gunscher, Linger, Goebbels, Erich Kempke, Peter Hogel, Ewald Lindolf, and Hans Reiser, all of whom raised their arms in salute as they silently said goodbye to their leader. Within hours, it was reported that only charred bones and piles of ashes remained, which were later covered up in a shallow bomb crater. The Third Reich was no more. The Soviets learned about Hitler's death on May 1st during peace negotiations. Joseph Stalin learned about it 13 hours after it happened. Because of this, he demanded unconditional surrender. He also commanded the counter-espionage unit of the Red Army to confirm Hitler's death by finding his corpse. Later that night, the Reichsender Hamburg radio station announced Hitler's death and his successor, Dönitz. In the early hours of May 2nd, the Soviets finally captured the Reich Chancellery. They extracted Hitler and Brown's remains from the soil. However, Stalin was still wary. He wasn't sure that Hitler was truly dead so he didn't allow the public to learn that they had Hitler's remains. Instead, they had the remains tested by a dental assistant and a dental technician who had worked for Hitler's dentist. Both confirmed that the remains were the Führer's. However, the Soviets later released various versions of Hitler's fate to the public. At first, they said that, upon examination, Hitler had died due to cyanide poisoning. A few days later, they claimed that they couldn't identify the remains and Hitler had most likely escaped. Stalin claimed that Hitler was in Spain or Argentina. Even years later, the Soviets would still claim that Hitler was somewhere in South America, Francoist Spain, or was hidden by the former Western Allies. Stalin wasn't the only one who felt wary. Even the Western Allies were rankled over the lack of evidence to prove Hitler was dead. He wasn't supposed to mysteriously vanish after their victory. He still had to stand trial for the atrocities that he had committed. Even if he died, they had to see the corpse so that they could verify his death. Because of this, they also investigated the bunker complex grounds later that year. They dug up the soil where Hitler was supposed to be buried. They found two hats that were identified as his as well as an undergarment that had Brown's initials. However, they weren't allowed to verify his remains, and without them, it would be difficult to convince the public that the threat that was Adolf Hitler was gone. Over the next few years, the CIA and FBI would continue to receive leads regarding Hitler's survival. None of the leads panned out, though. Aside from the different reports given by the Soviets, there were also various versions regarding Hitler's fate that was offered by others, including media, during the weeks after his death. The Hamburg radio reported that Hitler died at his command post in the Reich Chancellery while fighting the Russians until his last breath. 
The Swedish Count Folke Bernadotte stated that Hitler may have died due to a cerebral hemorrhage which was told to him by Heinrich Himmler. The Paris press claimed that Hitler was blown to bits by a bomb placed in his underground fortress in the Tiergarten on April 21st. He was killed by other Nazi leaders who wanted to end the war. The Tokyo radio said Hitler was killed by an exploding shell as he walked down the steps of his Berlin Chancellery, while the London Daily Express published that he was on his way to Japan in a U-boat. Edward W. Beatty Jr., a United Press war correspondent who was just released after spending eight months in Nazi captivity, stated that Hitler was killed in the bomb plot last year. At least, that's according to what he learned from the Germans. According to Dr. Hans Fritscher, a deputy of Goebbels, Hitler had killed himself. The body was then hidden in a place that was impossible to find. So what did the Soviets find then? With so many versions of what happened, it's difficult to discern the truth. Did Hitler really kill himself? Was he assassinated? Or did he break out from the surrounding Allied forces closing in on Berlin and live in anonymity for the rest of his life? There are many theories regarding Hitler's ultimate fate. And it's not surprising. There were many versions reported about how he died. More importantly, the only people who had direct evidence of his death, the Soviets, refused to share what they found. Instead, they put out many contradicting and self-refuting statements regarding the Fuhrer's demise, causing many to doubt the veracity of what the Germans reported. After all, the testimonies from Hitler's followers, including his bodyguard, weren't considered definitive proof. No picture or film was ever provided. The most popular belief among the conspiracy theorists is that Hitler and Brown escaped from Berlin and went to South America. And it's certainly possible. Thousands of Nazis who were able to escape, including the Angel of Death Dr. Joseph Mengele, were able to live to ripe old ages there. Some secret documents of the FBI surfaced in 2015, which contained reports stating Hitler had escaped Germany via a U-boat and headed to Argentina, which further fueled the belief of some in this theory. There was also a theory that Hitler, along with some of his SS men, were able to escape to Antarctica, where he had a secret base called Base 221. According to the Germans, the base was created in 1938 during a Nazi expedition. They discovered an underground cave where they either made contact with aliens or found alien technologies that enabled them to create advanced weapons systems. Some believe that Hitler escaped to that place in order to rebuild his vision of the Third Reich with the use of some alien tech. Historians and scientific experts regard these reports of Hitler's survival as merely fringe theories. For them, Hitler's demise is a sure thing. The question that should be asked is, what happened to his corpse? Captured Nazi officers claimed that Hitler had shot himself while Braun had taken cyanide. The bodies were taken to the garden outside of the bunker, placed in a shell hole, and was doused in petrol before setting them on fire. However, possibly due to the small amount of petrol used, the fire didn't manage to destroy the bodies despite having burned for more than two hours. According to the secret Stalin files, the Smirsch agents found the half-charred corpses on May 5th. They removed the bodies to a small Berlin suburb called Buch, which was an hour away. The corpses were examined by a forensic pathologist. According to the initial examination of the corpse, a portion of the back of the skull was missing. X-ray files of Hitler's dentures were located by the assistant of his dentist, K.T. Heusermann, to verify the identity of the corpse. After a positive identification, the pathologist sent a letter to the head of the NKVD, the precursor of the Soviet KGB, confirming the identities of the bodies. He reported that there were pieces of glass inside the mouth of the corpses, along with a strong smell of bitter almonds, which indicated that they had died of cyanide poisoning. The letter also stated that they had buried the remains in a secret location in Buch. In the summer of 1945, the Smirsch officers were ordered to move to another part of Germany, so they exhumed the bodies 
and moved them to Rathenau. Despite this result, the Soviets had the suspicion that the bodies they found were dupes, set up for them to find with enough forensic evidence that would lead them to think that these corpses were of Hitler and Ava Brown. In November 1945, Lieutenant General Kabulo informed Moscow that he wanted to exhume the bodies because he had discovered witnesses from the bunker who stated that Hitler had shot himself. Because of this, the bodies were once again exhumed on January 13, 1946. The skull was taken to Moscow while the bodies were moved to Magdeburg, East Germany. A second commission was also tasked to go back to the burial site to find more evidence. Reportedly, they found the part of the skull that was missing, and it had a bullet hole which they believed to have been the exit wound. However, the part of the skull that was discovered was not located at the back of the head. Rather, it was the left parietal bone which is located at the temple. Based on this bone, experts believe that the bullet had entered the left side of the forehead and exited the right side of the head. Aside from this skull, the Soviets also collected bloodstains from the bunker sofa where the couple had committed First, the bloodstains in the bunker did not match with the manners of death that was reported by captured German officials. More importantly, it was later found that the blood was not the same as Hitler's blood type. However, the Soviets still confirmed that Hitler had shot himself in the head while Eva Braun had poisoned herself. It must be noted that the woman's corpse had artillery shrapnel wounds to the chest. The NKVD stated that these wounds probably occurred after she died, but before she was buried, maybe when the bodies were laid out in the garden before they were burned. However, decades later, University of Connecticut archaeologist and bone specialist Nick Bellantoni found that the skull belonged to a female between the ages of 20 and 40. Now, it could be Ava Brown's skull, but there were no reports that she had shot herself or been shot by someone. So, where does this leave us? The forensic evidence tells us that the corpses that the Soviets found were most likely not of Hitler and Brown. The Soviets did some selective cherry-picking in order to provide a narrative that Stalin wanted to hear. But what about the dental identification? The dental bridges were Hitler's. However, according to the dental assistant, she only saw the dental bridges without any jawbone fragments attached to it. This means that the dental bridges could have been placed loose in the mouth of the corpse to make it seem that it was Hitler's body when it was not. However, the Soviets maintained that they had presented freshly excised dental bridges that were still attached to the jawbones to the dental assistants for verification. There were other discrepancies between what was known about Hitler and Brown and the bodies that the Soviets discovered, such as the lack of any trace of cyanide in the internal organs and the wrong height. Does that mean Hitler was able to escape? No, it does not. At that point, Hitler was already in very poor health. He could barely go up the stairs in the bunker. How could he have stealthily gotten out of a city surrounded by enemies and ran all the way to South America? Moreover, Hitler had always talked about killing himself should he be defeated. He told this to many witnesses. He even took the time to discuss with his physician how to best do the deed. In addition, Joseph Goebbels was one of Hitler's closest and most devoted followers. If Hitler was still alive, Goebbels would definitely be with him. However, Goebbels' corpse has been identified. He had killed himself, his wife and his five little children. More importantly, if Hitler had escaped, he had done so without any of his inner circle by his side. Based on all of this, Here's what we think most likely happened. Hitler did kill himself on that fateful day. And his loyal subordinates followed his instructions to the letter. Hitler wanted their bodies completely destroyed. He didn't want his body to be put in display in Moscow. So what did the Soviets find? We believe that the bodies were substitutes placed there to placate the Soviets and prevent them from looking anywhere else. 
There were many witnesses that testified about the fire burning Hitler and Brown's corpses from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Hitler's men had enough time, a whole 31 hours to get the partially burnt bodies and bury them somewhere else before the Soviets came investigating. But what about the bodies that the Soviets found in the pit? Remember, they were in the middle of the war. There were bodies all around them. The SS didn't need to look far to find substitutes. They simply needed to find ones that fit some of the requirements, such as a young female. After all, they were planning on burning the bodies beyond recognition. Since identification would be done through dental records, the SS hurriedly pulled them out, which is why the dental bridges were no longer attached to jaw fragments. Unfortunately, the fire wasn't able to completely eradicate evidence, pointing to the fact that these bodies were not Hitler and Brown's. It was a poorly executed plan, but one that worked anyway. The question now is, where is Hitler's body? According to an interview given by Hitler's valet, Heinz Linger, after he was released by the Soviets, the Soviets had never found the body. According to him, they had buried him in the park of the Chancellery in a common grave. Whether you believe that this is true or not, we leave it up to you. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.